but um, I just didn't want to wait any longer to start sharing stuff. So um, I have a website online, and uh, I've got seven complete chapters from the audiobook. This is the cover. You might have seen it on the doorway coming in. I'm going to change the font, but I just wanted something up there for now. So could I see the hands of how many people that I've interviewed that are here today that are in this project? Great. This is uh, half a dozen or so of 89 people in the project. I'd like to just talk a little bit first about oral history and how I got started in this project. I, um, when, I, when I was in high school, I recorded on a cassette recorder some of my grandparents' stories, and then I never got them uh, put onto digital, and now the tape is ruined. Over the years, I did, uh, I would, if I had a friend that was a good storyteller or met someone interesting that had an interesting story to tell, then sometimes I would um, ask them if they wanted to tell, it, uh, tell the story and let me record it. I don't know how it happened, but then the next thing, somebody was at my house and, and I was telling about that, oh, you should record Disney stories, and well, okay, let's get out my recorder. And I started recording people, and I think, Christine, you were the first person I recorded. them according to subject matter within the files. And then I would just like pace the room 
while I pretended like I was just had never heard it before and listened to what it was. It's once we get into the memoir part, starting in chapter four with grandparents, uh, we start, grandparents is actually stories of two people telling about the stories that came down through their family to them about how their grandparents came here and, and, and what happened to them. And then finally in chapter four, born in the 1920s, we have the several people in their 90s, Nick Pavlovich, Lefty Lazovich, and Laverne Williams, talking about their childhood in town and everything. And then uh, as we go along, we meet more people who get who's, who are children now in the 1930s and 40s, and we keep up with those people we've gotten to know. So then, instead of talking a lot, then I just mostly introduce the characters or remind the listener who we're listening to from chapter to chapter. You're going to get to know these people like characters a bit, you know. Some of them are kind of major characters, and some of them just have more to say about a thing or two, an event or two, something in town. You know, in a little town, too, there's lots of disagreements. We have disagreements and arguments and fights over little things in, the, in, 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 in town. And sometimes there were controversial things that would come up. And then sometimes I would make an extra effort to get different sides of, of an issue. The deportation comes up. Already in chapter four, grandparents, one of the people who talks about her grandfather, he got swept up into the deportation. And um, I say in there that I'm going to get back to it. So I have a surprise reason to get back to it in 1968, which um, if you buy a copy of my own. <laughs> I mean, it is one of the longer chapters because it's kind of controversial. And still, in, people have different views. This was one of those things that split the town right down the middle. Thousands of people were deputized and arrested thousands of other people. And so it was a, it was a wound to the town. And you know, I was so grateful to some of these people in this story who told it like they like it was kind of. You can see the change in their voices and the change in their attitudes through the years. In their, for example, their feelings about the hippies coming to town. Mm -hmm. That was shocking to some people. Now they're like they're friends, you know. And so I you know we have we have conflict, we have resolution, we have exciting changes that occurred with people. Now I try to let the contradiction stand in here. So you'll hear some people say just the opposite of somebody else. That's just the way it is. I like when I have chosen a story, um, then I like to let a person really tell it. Of course these are edited severely. You know, people are always on, on, well, they're thinking back, some of the stuff they're thinking back 40, 50 years on things. So obviously they're not going to be real, you know, and people have told me after I gave them their uh, family history, I had no idea I was so articulate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much.